Hello and welcome to Five Year Club video number 89. Today is a little mini lesson on investing. Specifically, I'm going to talk about using leverage in your investments, which means using debt in your investments. Don't do it. That's the, that's the short story, and now we're going to discuss why. Leverage is debt. Leveraged instruments are when debt is used to amplify investment returns. First, we'll discuss buying on margin, and then we'll discuss a similar uh, concept, uh, a triple leveraged S&P 500 fund. And I have copied and pasted the relevant parts from this link, which I will put in the description, and we will read it now. Buying on margin. Buying on margin is borrowing money from a broker. The broker is the person who helps you purchase the stock to purchase stock. You can think of it as a loan from your brokerage. Margin trading allows you to buy more stock than you'd be able to normally. To trade on margin, you need a margin account. This is different from a regular cash account in which you trade using the money from the account. You can keep your loan as long as you want, provided you fulfill your obligations. First, when you sell the stock in a margin account, the proceeds go toward your go to your broker against the repayment of the loan until it is paid until it is fully paid second there is also a restriction called the maintenance margin which is the minimum account balance you must maintain before your broker will force you to deposit more funds or sell stock to pay down your loan when this happens it's known as a margin call we'll talk about this in detail in the next section when the price okay so, and this is the next section right here. All right, and so let's be clear what's happening here. Your broker is loaning you money to buy more stock. So you say might put in $1 and your broker matches that with a dollar. So now for $1 out of your pocket, you own $2 worth of shares of stock. If that stock doubles, then, you know, it's gonna be say $4 total because it was $2 of stock that you bought, double that, you got $4. And if you wanted to get out then, then in theory it would be something along the lines of you need to pay your broker back a dollar plus a little bit of interest and then you get $3. So say you get $2.75, right? So now instead of getting only $2 from that stock doubling, you get $2.75. And that would be the only reason why you would do this because if you didn't get more money, why would you take the extra risk? And what is that risk? The risk is that if the stock drops instead of doubling, if it, say, gets cut in half instead of doubling, well, your broker now, they get worried because they need their money back. And so they want some money from you. And the only reason why the broker was willing to do this transaction in the first place is because they already have some money from you. They are the person managing the money that you put in uh, to buy the stock in the first place. And so when that stock falls, if you are not willing to send your broker the money to cover their loss, the broker is going to sell shares of the stock that you purchased in the first place. And so now you own less stock than you purchased in the first place. And if the price of the stock simply goes up and down and up and down and up and down and up and down, to the extent that those downward swings generate margin calls, the amount of stock that you are holding is going to drop and drop and drop and drop. And even if the stock comes back up to its original price, the original price on the day that you began doing this, because you own fewer shares, of the stock, you are not going to be at the same value that you were at when you started the whole thing. The volatility of the stock moving up and down, even though in the long run it went absolutely nowhere, is going to eat away at the value that you put into this transaction in the first place. This means that when you buy stock on margin, not only are you paying some interest on that loan from the broker, uh, you are also exposing yourself to a volatility risk that is a risk beyond someone who bought the stock not on margin. If the person just bought the stock in the normal way, they would not be exposed to the same level of volatility risk as someone who buys the stock on margin. So it's a bad, 
It's a bad deal because if the stock falls and drops in half, now you owe even beyond the stock dropping in half. And if the stock just wiggles a bunch, you lose money from that too. And so there are kind of asymmetric downsides when it comes to risk when you buy stock on margin. And uh, let's look at a triple leveraged S&P 500. I'm just going to read through the article um, that is linked here because I think it does a great job of explaining what goes on with the triple leveraged S&P 500, considering that, and this is a, a Facebook post by somebody in a, in a financial group that I follow, considering that I have a minimum of 20 years to invest, more like 33 years, what, if any, are the problems with TQQQ? Check it out, triple, triple leveraged S&P 500. Also have them for NASDAQ, etc. Why are these funds not the choice for a long term? And the reason why he's saying S&P 500 is because there is a very high probability that the S&P 500 after 20 years is going to be higher than at the beginning of that 20 year period. So he's saying, look, if I know over this time period it's going to go up, why wouldn't I leverage it? Let's look at that. Three triple leveraged ETFs. Three triple leveraged ETFs, that's exchange traded funds, and why you shouldn't buy any of them. It may sound like a good idea to multiply your investment dollars by three, but here's what you should know. Leverage exchange traded funds, or leveraged, that's a really hard word for me to say. Leveraged, 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 leveraged. Leveraged exchange traded funds or ETFs can effectively double or triple your exposure to a certain index or asset class and can be used to create a long bull or short bear position. For example, a triple leveraged S&P 500 ETF will return three times the daily performance of that index. However, before you buy a triple leveraged ETF, it is important to know how they work and the drawbacks of holding them for long periods of time. Three examples of triple leveraged ETFs to illustrate what these investment vehicles are and what they might be used for. Here are three examples of popular triple leveraged ETFs. To be clear, I'm not recommending or endorsing any of these. So here we have the Daily Financial Bull 3X shares, the ProShares Ultra Pro Short S&P 500. So I think that's shorting the S&P 500 and then, and then uh, having that on some leverage. And the Gold Miners Index Bull 3X shares. Uh, the first one tracks the Russell 1000 Financial Services Index, whose top holdings inclu include Berkshire Hathaway, JP Morgan Chase, and Wells Fargo. The fund shares instruments that seek to produce 300% of the index's daily performance. The second one, I'm not going to try to pronounce these, is an inverse triple leveraged ETF that aims to return three times the inverse of the S&P 500's daily performance. In other words, if the S&P 500 decreases by 1% today, this fund should theoretically gain 3%. The... Gold Miners Index Bull 3X shares amplifies the daily performance of the New York Stock Exchange ARCA Gold Miners Index, which includes companies that primarily mine for gold. The problem with holding triple leveraged ETFs in your portfolio. Leveraged ETFs tend to have above average expense ratios, fees. And I'm trying to make this window smaller. There we go. Um, yep, so we're going to be paying higher fees on these. And that is certainly the case with the ETFs I mentioned above, although I wouldn't necessarily call the fees excessive. Besides, the fees aren't the reason most investors should avoid leveraged ETFs. Here's the problem. Notice the keyword daily that appears in all three fund descriptions. Triple leveraged ETFs typically produce triple the daily return of the underlying index or investment. You might think that this would produce triple the return of the index over long periods of time, but mathematically, this is simply not the case. Consider this simplified example. Let's say that a certain stock index that starts at $100 falls by 20% on the first day, now $80, rallies by 20% on the second day, now $96, and then falls by 25% on the third day, now $72. Overall, this produces a net loss of 28% for the three-day period. A triple, triple leveraged ETF tracks the same, tracking the same index would fall by 60% on the first day, now $40, rise by 60% on the second day, 
now $64 and dropped by 25 uh, and dropped by 75% on the third day, now $16. This translates to a three-day loss of 84%, which is exactly three times the loss of the index. No big surprise yet. The problem is what these loss percentages mean. In the first case, the non-leveraged ETF would have to rise by 39% to get you back to even. On the other hand, the leveraged ETF would have to rally by a staggering 525% just to break even again. This is a simplified example, but mathematically, the point is that declines in the index have a more devastating effect on the long-term performance of the leveraged ETFs, essentially creating a negative bias over time unless the index goes straight up forever. In other words, these funds rarely, if ever, match triple their index's performance over long time periods. And that is all that we need to read it about that because I want you to understand that the downside risks are bigger than the upside risks on these leveraged ETF funds. I'm going to link all of the links here in the description so you can go and do your own reading. But bottom line is that, yes, leveraging your investments amplifies gains, but it also amplifies losses and disproportionately Additionally, it exposes you to a risk of volatility, and the stock market can be very volatile in short periods of time, especially because of stupid political bullshit. And you don't want to lose all your money to fluctuations due to stupid political bullshit. So avoid leverage in investments, avoid buying on margin, even if you can make more money faster if it goes up, because when it goes down, and it will, you will lose your ass. That is it for Five Year Club video number 89. I hope you enjoyed that, and I hope that you now know more about and avoiding leverage investments, avoiding buying a margin, and uh, just, yeah, buy an S&P 500, but just buy it the normal way and hold it forever. That's it. Have a fabulous evening.